what about, I want to talk about journaling maybe, and, and this could, we can kind of you know, end on this because I think we could probably go deep down the rabbit hole, but why, obviously you're, you're creating journals. Is journaling a big part of your life? Is that something you've done for a long time or? Well, it, it's one of those things. Yeah, it's a good topic because you talk about like, why do you build a product? You should build a product that you want, that you would use, and perhaps that you haven't been able to find the version that is most useful for you. So for me, many, many years ago, I was like, I would love to journal. Everyone I, I talk to talks about how powerful journaling is and how you need to get up in the morning and journal. And I was like, all right, I'll become a journaler. And I would go out and I would buy every journal I can get my hands on. And for me, I never really, they never didn't really work for me. I found that they, they were one of two categories. They were either too open to stream of consciousness to, um, you know, just, uh, just put your thoughts in here, stream of consciousness. What are you feeling today? It was to that. I'm a little too ADD for that. Or it was like, it made me more stressed to journal. Cause it was like, all right, five goals for the day. Come back at lunch. Talk about your process, your progress at the end of the day, come back and do this. So it felt too prompted or too unprompted. And I was like, huh, you know, personally, I would like something that probably sits in the middle of that, that I, I hadn't been able to find a version of that, that worked. So that was the impetus for me to create a journal that I would use something that takes 10 minutes a day. You could do any time of day. It wasn't a productivity journal, um, but it wasn't uh, just share your emotions journal. It was the challenging journal that kept you accountable, but did it in a simple way. That was a good mix of prompted and unprompted. That was the whole Genesis. And I created that and that is how everything started. And from there, yes, voracious journaler, because I've realized the power of questions not just the power of writing down what you want to hear. Cause I think a good journal is a combination of, you know, checking yourself. Where are we? Where's your head at today? Let, let's just at least let's get where we are at. And then hitting you with a very hard bespoke custom question that gets you thinking that is the value of journaling. And that is, that is mindfulness. All mindfulness is, is, you know, a compassionate challenging of the assumptions you've made to date an exposing of what you don't know, the challenging of what you do know. And I think really the only way to do that is with very specific questions that go beyond five things you're grateful for. What do you want out of life? Who are you? How do you feel? Because I think we're very wired to just repeat the same things or tell ourselves the things we want to hear. I think a good journal makes you uncomfortable in a sense uh, and empowers you to go out and live that. So that's been my whole thing with journals. And I've created quite a few based on different topics, but I've just re I've realized the power of a good question, um, which sounds simple, but I think, you know, the reason for products should be simple. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's, that's, that's been the genesis of it. Like I've just realized how, you know, the, how powerful the right question at the right time can be in life. If someone's listening in, what question should they be asking themselves today? Like they're only going to write one question down. What would you encourage them to, to think about? Um, I mean, I, I have a lot of, of prompts around that around like identity. Like I think the, the most foundational ones are like, who do you want to be? But defining yourself by verbs, you talk about manifesting earlier. Like I like the exercise that I, I borrow from um, habit formation, which is like, I'm the kind of person who, and then you complete that with as many verb statements as possible. Cause I think our inclination, when we say like, who do you want to be? Or what's your goal in life? Most of us say, I just want to be happy. I want to be successful. I think that's a challenge because that's a very ambiguous statement and it's difficult to be that person at all times. And when we're not the person we want to be, we tend to devolve and blame ourselves and guilt ourselves and do all these things. But a statement like I'm the kind of person who, and then you list out these statements for one, it gives you verbs to do. And two, it gives you credit for what you're doing and it keeps you going. Um, so something as simple as that, I think is really powerful. That's one that I, I try to do as often as can, as I can, even amidst moments where I, I'm not happy or I'm not feeling successful. I sit down and say, I'm the kind of person who it reminds me of what I've been doing and it keeps me accountable for what I need to do. And it inspires me. Maybe it'll give me an idea. If I say, I want to be successful. What does that mean? First of all, we need to define success, but also what are the things I'm doing that will make me successful? Let's forget the adjectives. I don't like adjectives. I like verbs. And instead of, I want to be successful, I know I'm the kind of person who does what he says he's going to do. I'm the kind of person who is willing to reach out to someone and start an awkward conversation. I'm the kind of person who commits to doing a hundred episodes or whatever it may be. I feel, find that kind of thing really invigorating. And often if we're at a point where we have a goal, but we don't have verbs that align with it, it's a great opportunity to actually create a plan, a plan of attack. Um, so again, my, my whole thing with mindfulness is it's like action oriented, like there, there's value, of course, in being self-aware. Um, but self-awareness without action is 
I don't want to say meaningless, but where does it lead you? You know, the whole point of being intentional and, you know, tr looking inside and doing inner work is to manifest in, in outer work and actions in doing different and doing better and doing simpler, whatever it may be. So I think a good journal gets you honest, but gets you action oriented. And um, for me, that's just kind of what I've always tried to create and, you know, really what I gravitate towards personally. Well, I think it's a nice loop back to, you know, life reacts to what we do. We have to, we, it's, it's one thing to say, Hey, I want to journal. It's another thing to put some time in, even if it's one minute a day, right. Even you don't have to, you know, make yourself a bath. You don't have to put candles on, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. just journal, pick out. It's yeah. like, I journal at nighttime before bed. I don't know about you. Like yeah. that's, that's what works for me. Yeah. Right. Some other people, maybe they do it. Maybe they're thinking about the question when they're on a walk, like it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you put some time and energy and build. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Cause I used to be like very anti self-help. So like, Oh, what do I need to get some robes and some yeah. crystals and align my chakras? Like, what does that mean? Mindfulness is the most practical thing in the world. Recently I've been referring to it as brute force mindfulness, which is just introspection that gives you so much incentive to take action that you can't help, but do things differently or better or more in tune, whatever it may be. That is mindfulness. And like, to your point about when and where it does not matter. In fact, I'm working with a fitness brand right now to create a mindfulness journal that you use in the gym, like in between sets, like there is, there is no defined parameter for when you can or should be mindful or practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is literally just introspection. It's the, the, the question of why and the answer of why. And when I look at it that way, it's much more practical than being like, oh, mindfulness is energy and energy is healing. It's like, yeah, sure. Those, those are elements of it. And I love people who take a more spiritual approach to mindfulness. But for me, mindfulness is literally just getting honest with yourself and allowing that honesty to lead to actions that are aligned with the honesty, as opposed to copying, borrowing, rushing, impatience, whatever it may be. So for me, it's, you know, it's, it's the most practical thing in the world. And I well, usually when I journal, I, I listen to house music, upbeat dance music. Like I'm not sitting here, you know, with classical music on. That's just my style. And I yeah. think people, you know, can find freedom in broadening their definition of mindfulness. So it doesn't become a hokey cliche thing. It becomes just a powerful action oriented thing that gives you clarity. That is the point of, of journaling mindfulness to give you clarity. So obviously very passionate about this. That's awesome. And, and your new, it's the new journal. It's called that's bold of you, right? Is that the new journal? Uh, so that's actually just a book. Uh, oh, that was my that's first book. Oh, that was okay. my first book book. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's got the essence of a journal, but okay. it's in a book form. Um, but yeah, all my, all my other journals are like journal journals. Um, but again, I, I've kind of taken a little bit of different approach to journals. There's a lot of journals out there where <laughs> it's just like the same page over and over again. Yeah. My journals usually are, uh, different prompts every day, of course, uh, but also a little bit of perspective alongside of it, a couple paragraphs of something to consider. I, I've just found, you know, sometimes when we're stuck in our heads, a question, a question's a question. We'll give it the same answer we've always given it, or we'll avoid the honest answer. But you add a little bit of perspective from someone like myself or like you could be an aha moment. Just the way that someone says something, it could break you free of the same thing, the same thing, or aversion to honesty. So that's why, like, for me, my form of journaling, it's like a hybrid. It's kind of like prose plus journal, just a little bit. And, you know, that is the push that sometimes I think we need to finally be honest with ourselves. Yeah.